not true, but there are some women on the edge of the important uh, discussion. She was at the center of the discussion. She influenced many people. She criticized many important philosophers. So I think it is, um, it is a, a, she makes a difference. And I think also the, usually the ch talks on gender and gender in philosophy have to change from her example now. I, I, yeah, I, for the camera, it's necessary that I have it, yeah. When I ask myself, why did we start to do that? Unfortunately, now Dieter Suski is not yet here. Dieter Suski worked at the Humboldt University, and they had a big center on the 18th century philosophy, even before Germany was united. And I was very friend with a friend of him, Hartmut Hecht. And from the, 90, the early 90s on, we started to be interested on Emily de Châtelet, they, because they were uh, scholars on uh, Diderot, on Voltaire, on Euler, and, and the mathematicians and the physicians, the physicists of that time. And um, so we, we did our research for a quite long time. I think, of course, uh, the book of Badinter gave a certain initiative to the study of Emily de Châtelet. However, from the point of the content of the Badinter book, it was not a philosophical book in its uh, in what it wanted to be meant uh, to be uh, uh, to be. So um, the studies on Emily de Châtelet, and I'm very happy and I'm proud. I think the book we did in. 2006, we started um, to celebrate the 300th centenary of uh, du Châtelet in Potsdam. And some of the people who were there and who accompanied me and did the first book on Emily du Châtelet between Leibniz and Newton with me are here, like uh, Andrea Reichenberger. Anna Rodriguez supported uh, the book with a big bibliography the really one of the standard bibliographies now on Emily de Châtelet. And Suski wrote for the very first time on the context of Emily de Châtelet to Euler, to the mathematician Euler, which was really other new and very new and very first insights were gained at this 2006 conference, because also a colleague from Switzerland um, had uh, um, uh, uh, found a copy of de Châtelet's physics in Switzerland, you know, and no one knew that, that, that she wrote this whole physics and everybody was only uh, uh, familiar with a, uh, a part of the physics at that time. Now we welcome also uh, uh, um, um, Boris Gabor, and we are happy that you are here. So, <laughs> we, so we <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It was so easy. I'm sorry for that. So, um, so this is what I wanted to point out that we try with the institute uh, to. Yes, to encourage the studies on Emily de Châtelet. And um, I would like to introduce, I think it, is, uh, it makes sense if we introduce each other at the start, because we would like to work together. And first, be first before we do that, I would like to say some words on the University of Paderborn. Because I think Germany, mm. two or three days ago, I was invited to, uh, for a talk to Vienna. And in Vienna, I met people from the Humboldt and from Berlin and so on. And they said, oh, how strange that you are doing these things in Paderborn. And we never knew and so on. And I think the German structure of universities is different. The uh, University of Paderborn, so we have the local system of universities, not the big ones and so on, who are going to do research in some specialized fields. So we developed now, 10 years ago, the history of women philosophers. But Paderborn might be a not too well-known name in philosophy now in the world. 
but it is a very acknowledged university for computing science. And I have to admit that I came to the university because of computing science. I worked for some years in philosophy and computing, and so I started it, and, uh, uh, and now I'm here. But now I think our philosophy project is much more known for the history of women philosophers. Some words uh, to Paderborn, to the city of Paderborn, because I think it's of interest. I don't know, some of uh, you leave already tomorrow in the afternoon, but I would like you to know some things of Paderborn, because Paderborn has its problems, because Paderborn is not on any important route. So Paderborn is an important, yeah, and this, there is a reason for that. Really, I know, I always say you only can take the airplane to come to Paderborn. Don't take the train, because this is, uh, this is very horrific. But this, it has, but there is an idea behind that fact. So, there, you know, there is an issue, there is a real topic. And the topic is that Paderborn always has been a very holy city. So, as the city has about 200 sources that come up, uh, and uh, this is, you know, when the Saxons and in the German times, the sources and the trees, and as the Italians like to say, the Germans still are dancing around the mm. trees and around the water. So the whole tradition of the whole nature and so on, Paderborn was a very important place for that. And this was the reason why in 800, Charlemagne came and wanted to conquer Paderborn. Paderborn, however, was not conquered till that time. Even the Romans tried to come here and uh, uh, were, um, had to withdraw uh, in the famous battle of nine after Christ, the famous when Varus lost all his, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the, big, the big loss of the Roman uh, Empire. Here, this is the region where this happened. And the, the point of Paderborn is now that we have this spectacular water uh, 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 phenomenon in the city. And it is, of course, not by random, that Charlemagne built over the, m the biggest source we have, the dome, the cathedral. Yeah. And first it is said he wanted to be crowned here, but then, so as it was even for Charlemagne very difficult to take Paderborn, he came seven times every year, slaughtered women and children along the Pader, and this is the reason why in this region, Charlemagne is called Charles the Slaughter. So, but finally he uh, won and he took Paderborn, and this is the reason why still today Paderborn is a celebrate, not today perhaps, but in, let's say in the centuries uh, from the f 14th century, even be, uh, beyond Cologne, it was the first university uh, that is beyond Cologne, so the second university built here in Germany in Westphalia was in Paderborn. So Paderborn is um, an important place for a certain tradition. To say that. And I hope I have the opportunity to show you some places of Paderborn because we think to end the workshop here at about six o'clock and we have our workshop dinner at eight o'clock in the center of the city and we can stroll here all together to the city and I can show you, you know, the throne of Charlemagne. But then, as you know, he left Paderborn. We all are sure that he was afraid uh, that is too dangerous staying in Paderborn, and he was then crowned in Aachen. Yeah. So, okay, this to Paderborn, I think the history is very interesting. So we can say Paderborn is a city of women, but there is another city here about 40 kilometers far from Paderborn, which was really called the city of the women, which is Hereford, the place where uh, Elizabeth of Bohemia uh, lived. So, um, um, w w w how will I proceed now? I, uh, yeah, I have to, uh, I s uh, spoke about the dinner, and first I would like to introduce 
the team to you. So we are now various uh, um, assistants, teachers in the history of uh, women philosophers here at the University of Paderborn. And some of them you see here. And this is the reason why I would like to introduce these people uh, to you so you learn to know each other. So you see me and you see Ana Rodriguez. Ana Rodriguez is supporting the development of the history of women philosophers here now since 2006. So she is working on Emily de Châtelet and gives her talk this afternoon. Here you see Andreas Blank, who is not really uh, in that sense uh, a true part, but he's an associated partner of our studies into the history of philosophy. Uh, uh, Andreas Blank is an uh, associate professor. Yeah, it, this is perhaps the adequate uh, American uh, or English title for it. Dr. Maria Robaszkiewicz, you met her, she is sitting next to you. She has now, she did her PhD on Hannah Arendt and is now the organizer of our events. Here you see Frank Wartmann, he's a specialist on ancient philosophy. You see Julia Lerius here. Yeah, <laughs> so you, yeah, because there is a lot of reason that you will be in contact with the people at another time. She uh, prepares her PhD on Hildegard von Bingen. And you uh, see Julia Mühl, who's starting now her PhD on uh, women in phenomenology. So, we succeeded to convince Barry Smith to do a monist on the history of women's ideas. And of course, this was really a great thing. Because now, um, important journals are coming and um, asking for also doing works on the history of women philosophers. And I'm happy that two contributors to the monist are here, two or three. So the team, Ivana uh, Shukula Karasman and Luca Borsic, contributed to the monist issue on uh, Nogarola. And uh, Blanc uh, contributed on Mary Estelle. So uh, I would like to um, say some words, because uh, we are very active in the social media. And I would like you to inform us, to give us the information. So I think the social media have pros and cons, as we all know. But it was a very important uh, mean for us to internationalize the studies also. And, you know, and uh, from that point of view, perhaps it is not so important if you are in Paderborn or all, all over the world. We have, uh, via the social media, internationalized it. And we are happy to get some information from you uh, to put it online in this, um, uh, and to use this instrument. So even on YouTube, this is the channel I talked about. Uh, uh, we have the conferences, the contributions to the conferences in other things. Um, next, I would like to introduce the speakers shortly to you. I think that the speaker introduced themselves again. But if they want to add something, but uh, uh, to know who is who, I think for the first time. It is interesting. Oh, I, I'm, as I'm very, very happy by the fact the Dieter Bahn. Suski, the Deutsche Bahn. Nee, Bahn. Was? <laughs> die Bahn. Die Bahn. Die Bahn. Die Bahn. Die Deutsche Bahn. We heard it several times today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we are happy to have you here. Great. Yeah. So we spoke already how we proceed. So when there is something to eat, and please, it's also help yourself for water, uh, Gabor and Dieter. Help yourself, take some water, take some coffee, and so on. Yeah, as long as I'm speaking, so you're not interrupting any uh, 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 conversation and any talk. But I would like to. Uh, 
inform you on the fact that the first master on specialized on the history of women philosophers was also initiated by this group here. We have a cooperation with a wonderful university in Istanbul, which is uh, the Yeditepe University. This is a special case too, because the Yeditepe University is a private university. One has to know that in Turkey, the universities, so the uh, state universities, mix religion studies and philosophy. So they do not have any longer pure philosophy. The private university, there are very good private universities in this very exciting city of Istanbul. And, um, but these pri most of the private universities do not offer studies in philosophy. They only offer studies in economics and uh, right and so on. So this is, really, this is an important thing and the director of the university was abroad for many years because he couldn't live in uh, Turkey and so on. So and it was a, a, a clear intention from the side of the university, first to have philosophy, second to have the, history, uh, the master with the history of philosophy. My colleagues in Istanbul are specialized on, the philo uh, on ancient philosophy in antiquity, on Aristotle, mainly on Aristotle and Plato. And so they contribute to the master, the two semester master, ancient philosophy, and we are doing the history of um, philosophers. So the master students we are having have two semesters in Istanbul and two semesters here. And I think this is a wonderful thing, you know, sitting in the green, Paderborn surrounding and then having two semesters in the exciting Istanbul and vice versa. Yeah. So this is important because this is a model I think we can expand to other universities too. So, so as I told you, I would like to um, introduce the speakers now, so to make us familiar with each other. And I start with uh, from the back to four. So I start to introduce those to you who are tomorrow, are speaking tomorrow. And then I come and return to those who will now take over the word. So this is tomorrow because Andreas Blank had to make the last, not, yeah, the last speaker here as he is one of the hosts here too and he will uh, speak about the problem of the contradiction the uh, topic of the contradiction is an important uh, topic in the Châtelet and widely discussed he will speak about that Andreas Blank I introduced him shortly so he worked on he's a specialist in early modern I would say and working at the university for a certain time here Andrea Reichenberger, she was even part in 2006 in our event on Emily de Châtelet in Potsdam. And uh, she did her PhD on Emily de Châtelet. She finished it this year or last year even. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it will be published soon. I would like to uh, uh, say something on that again. On the Vis Viva, she uh, did her PhD on de Châtelet and the Vis Viva. This came because she started some years ago here at the University of Paderborn and was also forced into the uh, issues of women philosophers. And she's speaking now on Du Châtelet, Laplace and Somerville. Well. So we will only have a small lunch break tomorrow. There is no mensa, but Maria did her very best. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so tomorrow morning we hear Dieter Suski. I honor Dieter Suski already because he did for the very first time the thing on Euler and Du Châtelet. And I think this is really a very important contribution to the Châtelet studies. Now he speaks again. I shortened the title a bit. Yeah, so. And Boris Gabo, I allowed myself to write here. You will contribute on Leibniz and we will have the discussion because the American style is now very much to bring the Châtelet on the wolf side. Yeah? And I think it is very interesting to see uh, how the discussion uh, is going on here. Ah, Boris Gaba, sorry. 
sorry, sorry. Dieter Suski, first, the ICO, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dieter Suski uh, works at the university in Berlin, at the Humboldt University. And you, you were specialized on 18th century? Yes, maybe. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> good. <laughs> Century. Yeah. More than in the present time. Yes, yes, some of us. More I exciting to live in this time. I don't know. So we can discuss this tonight uh, during dinner. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, I, I'm happy to welcome here Boris Gabor. He's a friend for so many years now that we are, this is the reason we are so. I, if I'm allowed to say that, so yeah. familiar and some of, like Andreas Planck and me, we have an Erasmus exchange with Budapest since some years. And uh, Boris Gaber, he's professor at the Edwes Lorand University in Budapest for, uh, in philosophy. And he's also the head of the National Academy. Not any longer, you have been something like that? Something like that, yes, yes, yes. He speaks so many languages and there is nearly no book, no important book in philosophy he has not translated into Hungarian. He's very active internationally, really. So he's, and we are very happy that you had the, took the opportunity to come and see us. I wanted him on Monday to speak to the students on Elizabeth of Bohemia, but he's running away tomorrow, aren't you? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the point. So, so we are now uh, Anna. Ru uh, yeah, yeah, I introduced to you already Anna Rodriguez. She started to develop, and I think this is a speciality of our study group here that we try to enhance the studies in the Châtelet in the moral philosophy and in the physics. Into, so the Châtelet is physics and mathematics. So, and I think this is the important issue and this is, this is the issue I like to focus on. And I will say some words even though I'm already so, uh, uh, took so much time uh, yet uh, um, on the fact that I think one has to bring together. It, Emilie de Châtelet is not widely um, um, renowned as a moral philosopher. And um, we think that uh, her investigations into physics and even mathematics and her moral philosophy are closely linked together. This is the reason why this uh, uh, workshop uh, has the title Laws of Nature, Laws of Morals. Then I'm very happy to meet for the very first time Professor Pichova from Brunn University, from the Masiak, Masaryk yeah, University in Brunn. And uh, yeah, we came to know her for yeah, some reasons and we wanted to meet her and we wanted to see what she is doing on Emilie Tichatelet and uh, we are very happy to have you here. She published the, several papers on Emily du Châtelet. Uh, actually, one only because I'm starting with uh, let's say the work on, on the text of Emily du Châtelet. Uh, and uh, recently I'm uh, working on her discourse to Bonheur. Oh, I see. And translating it into Czech. So oh, good. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we are very happy to have you here. And I'm happy to have the team, the philosopher's team, Ivana Shukula Karasman and Luka Borsic here with us. They uh, started, they also bring a novelty to us here. And uh, because I think there is no investigation hitherto on Emily de Châtelet and Boscovich. And Boscovich was an important man in the 18th century, of course, for distributing science. And so I think, all in all, it becomes a very innovative event again. And I'm happy for that. So this is the reason why I, before I say some and only bring the quotations on Du Châtelet and don't uh, 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 um, 
and do not give a talk on uh, laws of nature and so on, but I would like to, to awake your interest in what she's saying by some quotations. But um, um, first, let me say that although we have not really tried to make the workshop to laws of nature, laws of morals, so some of us did, and I did in my reflection, this is the title of the workshop. But nonetheless, I've started with Springer a series now on women, in women philosophers and scientists. Because it is, um, yeah, I think it is necessary to bring it together and to work into the women philosophers who have worked on the edge to the sciences. And we have some, already some good books being published in this series. Among these is the book of uh, uh, Andrea Reichenberger on Emily de Châtelet and others on mathematicians. We have very good people in the uh, uh, advisory board who provide the series. And I thought to propose here, whoever is interested to do that, to think of a book at the end of 2006 and 2017, of course, even enlarging our group of contributors who is interested to focus and to contribute on exactly the problem. How is uh, connected in the work of Emily de Châtelet, how are the laws of nature and the laws of morals connected? And to give you some hints, so and not to speak so much longer now, I simply give you some uh, quotes I love the most and don't explain them. I love this. Mais dans tous les pays, on appelait vertu ce qui est conforme aux lois établies et vice et qui leur est opposé. Car aucune société n'a pu subsister sans avoir des lois, de même que n'en peut jouer s'il n'y a des règles du jeu. Also das ist natürlich ein ganz wunderbares Bild, mit dem man viel machen kann. Ja? Und, ähm, und das wollte ich jetzt erstmal hinstellen. Wir alle wissen ja, sie war eine... G oh, sorry. We all know that she was a great uh, player. And uh, um, yeah, so, but only the quotations, I do not connect the uh, uh, quotations now. So now on the definition of the evil and the good to see her relational ethics and those of you who know her ontology and the relational concept she has, I think so, but nonetheless, even if you don't know that, keep it in mind. Madame M, que ce qui est un faux au piqué n'est pas une au reverse aussi ce qui est vice à Paris et vertu à Constantinople. This is the same today. You know, this is a phrase, this is so true, because, uh, yeah. Mais tous les hommes accordent à observer les lois établies chez eux et à regarder les actions comme bonnes ou mauvaises selon leur relation ou leur opposition à ces, à ces lois. So only to continue, I'm sorry, but my talk is not, there's no time for my talk. So, morals of morals and physics. So she started her very early writings, the Mandeville commentary and her text on liberty. And now these were two quotes from her text, on, uh, from the Mandeville uh, text where she is approaching on the relativity of morals. And here is uh, her introduction into the liberty text, also from the early 30s. Il est certain que la question de notre liberté, si en est une, nous intéresse infiniment plus que toutes celles que l'on peut faire sur la nature du mouvement et sur la conservation, puisque de cette seule question dépend toute la morale. This was the big problem she always questioned in over years, and I, I have a theory that from the question on liberty and the problems of the compatibility of physics and morals, she came from the Cartesian type of forces to the Leibnizian type 
of forces. So, and in this text, she is also saying, on voit aisément que les philosophes qui prétendent que la quantité de mouvement est invariable dans l'univers, nien à l'homme cette faculté soit mouvant. So, the problem of the possibility <coughs> to set to get something and to set something in action, which is contradictory to the laws in physics that follow the invariability uh, of uh, 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 the sum of the forces. This strong contradiction is the uh, starting point, I think, for her reflections on physics and on morals. Le pouvoir physique d'agir est donc ce qui fait de l'homme un être libre. So, liberty is defined as moving something, as getting into action. And this is a, these are wonderful texts because she re, uh, refutes what uh, Voltaire is saying and her position comes very clear from that. So now, and she even says, and this is, uh, so I don't know why I have now the English citation, where happiness and attraction is, becomes very similar. And she says, happiness is, um, is a condition of equilibrity. And you, I, I gave a talk this year, it was called Planetarian Ethics, because I think her idea of morals is very similar to uh, her cosmological uh, model. We cannot persuade ourselves into feelings of attraction for someone. An attraction can hardly ever be rekindled. Happiness in terms of physics, power of attraction as a matter-dependent force and form of balance stability. Yes, liberty and movement, our souls want to be moved. So you see that also her language is always interacting with, the, uh, with terms in physics and in morals. But this is only now to give you an idea why I think it is very important to have a look, uh, to, see, to investigate into the system of physics she's providing and uh, her studies in morals. Uh, why I think that her studies in morals have been uh, under-evaluated up to now, yes? And this might shed a new light on the fact.